Hi, it's Nell. Yes, I'm at my potting table again, and I am about to embark on another houseplant repotting adventure. And this time, it is the very popular spider plant. So stick around for that. So if you like videos about houseplants, gardening, plants, succulents, bromeliads, pruning, repotting, all that good, wonderful stuff. Be sure and subscribe because I upload a new video for you every week here at YouTube, and there are plenty in the archives for you to go back and peruse through. And yes, this is how my spider plant looks now. It grows outside, and it had a tough time last summer because we had a dry summer, at least in this part of Tucson. East Tucson and South Tucson got more rain. It's very spread out here, but we were very dry and my spider plant really took a hit. So I'm going to replace it with a succulent, which I will show you soon, but you can see all the brown tips and brown tips on plants. They're, I should say brown tips on house plants. Some house plants are very susceptible to brown tips and spider plants are one of them. It is from the air being too dry or the watering being too off. So in, in this case, it was really dry. And this plant gets about hour and a half of sun in, in the summer, in the morning, which you might think, oh, that's not that much. But the sun is very, very strong here in Tucson. So I, I wanna repot this save it, cut all the dead out, and give it a new home base. Now, spider plants aren't fussy in terms of soil. Just a good, high quality potting soil is just fine. I'm gonna add a few more amendments to mine just because I have them on hand. I do so much repotting, so I happen to have them. But if you have just a good potting soil, that is a soil less. It doesn't have any soil in it. And it'll say on the bag, formulated for house plants, that is what you want. The brand that I like and I am currently using and I've been using for a while is Fox Farm. I think it's Ocean Forest. I will leave a link to it in the blog anyway. If I remember, I will leave a link to the potting soil down below, but otherwise it'll be in the blog because there's always a blog post to go along with the videos I do. So I could tell this plant was starting to suffer because it used to have a lot more babies and the babies are very dry looking too. So it's gonna help for me to bring it inside because I do have air conditioning in the summer. I don't keep it too cold, but it's gonna be cooler than outdoors, so. And it's also gonna be in nice bright light and I'm not gonna have it in too much direct sunlight at all. So it should do a lot better indoors. So another thing I wanna tell you about spider plants, besides the brown tips, is that they have very thick fibrous roots. They store a lot of water and they're very tough. So that's why you want a mix that drains well of course you want to mix that drains well for all plants because unless you have an aquatic plant, they like to have the water drain out of them. Take the water they need and then have the excess drain out. So I am going to try to get this plant out of here. Well, obviously I am going to get the plant out of this pot and I have a few things. I have a knife, I have a trowel down below and I have this florist knife because I have a feeling that I am going to need to shave the root ball a bit. And I will show you how I do that. And this is one plant that does not mind to have its root ball shaved. But first, the video that I'm gonna be filming after this one, I don't think they're gonna post back to back, but it will be, um, I, I, I actually don't know which one is gonna post first, but this is my variegated elephant's food. Portulacaria, and I like this one because it grows upright. It also hangs, but I'm going to train it to be more of a hanging plant. It has a good start. 
in that and it can take some sun this is one fleshy succulent that can i believe the variegated form tends to burn a little bit more than the solid form that can really take a lot more light but this one just uh if it's getting a lot of light or if it's cool it'll tinge pink so this one will do a lot better in the spot where the spider plant was and also i won't have to water it as much yay <laughs> But uh, stay tuned for this video. Actually, I'm going to do a, a video and a post too about my six favorite hanging, you know, succulents, which I'm not sure when that'll post. But coming up sometime in 2019. And I'm going to jump in first before the repotting and tell you to stick around till the end of the video because you can see how the plant looks after three months time. Yes. It took me that long to get this, you know, video up. Actually, I had other ones to post, but um, it's actually good because you'll see how the plant has come back in a short period of time. Okay, I'm going to angle down so you can see what's going on here. And the, um, I took the chain off and I took it inside to soak because it was pretty dirty. So it was a good opportunity to get it clean. I think I'm just going to clean this plant up after I get it repotted because it's at like 4.30 in the afternoon and I want to get the other video done. Oops, here's some babies that have just rooted right in the pot. Just rooted themselves in. And then this pot is pretty heavy, which leads me to think that the roots are pretty thick on this. Uh, this whole stem is dried out, so I'm going to take it out. Come on. There. Dry stem. Bye-bye. Gonna bring you, I'm, I'm gonna bring you back to hell health, my little spider plant. Wow. I can see all the bulb blitz. Okay. And as I said, spider plants are pretty tough, so you don't have to baby them too much. But it's got a lot of nice new growth coming down in here. So I think that once I take away a lot of the old stuff, ooh, boy, in my next life, I'm getting myself a girly job. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay, so this, oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to do a lot of root ball sh shaving because I'm gonna put it in this pot. Wow, maybe I need to get a bigger pot. Hmm, let me see. See, see the roots here? Wow. And there are those bulblets there. It's why they're so tough. So I'm gonna shave some of this away and I think I'm gonna have to go get me a new pot. Boy, I was dreaming on that one. So close up on those really thick roots there and some of the bulblets, you know, right there. Wow. Okay, so, but there is some nice new growth underneath. So I have high hopes for this plant. Okay, so fortunately I bought this pot a couple days ago. I bought it for one of my Hoyas because I'm also going to do a Hoya repotting video too. I'm going to replant my two smaller Hoyas. And I was planning on spraying it, but I don't have time to spray it now. So I'm going to plant it and then I'm going to tie the plant up and I'm going to spray it afterwards because I want to make it look more modern. And my drill is a cordless drill and it's not charged up and I need to put some drain holes in this. So this is a little trick you can do if you have, you know, something like this and it's a th th thinner plastic pot. I'm just going to whack a, a couple holes in. Oh. Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day, does anything ever go? No. go okay so fortunately I bought this pot a couple days ago I bought it for one of my Hoyas because I'm also going to do a Hoya repotting video too I'm going to replant my two smaller Hoyas and I was planning on spraying it but I don't have time to spray it now so I'm going to plant it and then I'm going to tie the plant up and I'm going to spray it afterwards because I want to make it look more modern and my drill is a cordless drill and it's not 
charged up and I need to put some drain holes in this. So this is a little trick you can do if you have, you know, something like this and it's a th thinner plastic pot. I'm just going to whack a, a couple of holes in. Oh. Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day, does anything ever go? No. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is go all along with this more dull, dull knife here and just take some off of here and then I'll go with the sharp knife. I can get, I can get a lot off of here. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to point out, I've been calling these bowl blitz, but the technical term is tuber. <laughs> so just, just, just in case you were confused. Okay. So I'm just going to go around and gently cut off these roots. Again, they are really tough, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. All right. So that was a little bit more of an ordeal than I thought it was going to be, but that's how it happens. That's for sure. Okay. So you see these, these babies here with all the tubers. If I wanted to propagate them by division, I would just cut them off. They're still attached right there. And I would cut off that from, you know, the mother plant. And then I would just cut off the babies. And that would be another plant. But I only want one spider plant, so I'm just going to leave them on. But they will be part of the propagation video that I do on this plant. And I just want to show you, that's all I took off of, of the plant or off of the root ball. Boy, it looks like the whole, whole pot. But I potted this, I potted this spider plant in this pot like two years ago, I think. And boy, it grew a lot. Okay, so I have potting soil and cocoa qua chips and charcoal up to about here. And here is the cocoa qua that I use. It just is a uh, good stuff. As it says, it revitalizes the soil and it's a sustainable alternative to peat moss. Aids in the drainage, also gives a little bit of nourishment. Charcoal, I just always have because I do a lot of repotting and it is also a drainage booster and it sweetens the soil. So those two things you don't have to do, just a good quality potting soil, as I said, but I, I have them, so I always throw them in for extra, extra assurance. And we're just going to pop it right in there. Ha ha. Get in there, babies. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to fill in now, mainly with potting soil. I'm going to do a little compost, not a ton of compost because I want it to drain well. If I was going to grow this outdoors again, if I was repotting it to grow outdoors, I would put more compost in it because compost tends to hold the, hold the water a little more. So um, I don't want to do too much of it. And I'll probably put in a few more handfuls of the cocoa qua chips too. So I'm going to go in and just fill around and then I'll be right back with you. So after I got the plant on top of the um, blend, you know, the mix uh, that was about up to here. And then I put in just about this much compost all uh, around it. And then I filled in with more potting soil, a little bit of the cocoa quad chips, not that much. And I put in a little bit more char charcoal, but what I'm doing is I'm just going around and I'm pressing like that because there's some really big gapes in here. So I want them to go down so that I can really, um, top it off with some potting mix. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a little bit of worm compost. So it is now 
very early in July and this is how the plant looks after three months. It is greened up beautifully and filled in. There are babies on it. There's actually quite a few. There's probably about six or seven babies on it. And it still has some brown tips, but that's just the dry air. This plant is just, you know, subject to it, along with uh, like the Dracaena marginata, ponytail palms, they just tip in the dry air. So it is looking really nice and really good. And instead of putting it on my armoire, it is in the bedroom on the floor. <laughs> So what I did after I repotted it is I put it under my grapefruit tree and I just kind of let it settle in then because it was um, early to mid April. I watered it well, of course, and then I removed a lot of the yellow leaves. I removed all of the yellow leaves, all the dead leaves. I cut off all the old babies and I just did a lot of pruning on this plant. It was actually quite thin, but this just shows you how fast spider plants grow and how much they fill in in just a few months time. So there you can see those tips. Some have it, some don't, but that's just what they do. And there are the babies, a few of them anyway. So now I'm going to put it back in the house. And by the way, in the summer months, I do, I do water this every week. I bring it outside and I pour water over it. I make sure the soil is saturated. It drains out. I pour water over the foliage so it gets nice and wet. So then I bring it back inside. And in the winter, I water it about every two to three weeks. And it sits in a big north facing window near a big north north facing window in the bedroom. So I hope you have found this video about repotting or transplanting or potting a spider plant to be helpful. They're very, very popular house plants and easy to find. And let's see. Oh yes, I have a lot more videos coming your way. So stay tuned for those. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. Now let's get out in our gardens or into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.